Hey, what's up guys? It's Hoenn Confirmed here again. A little late here, but I decided better late than ever for the ZUPL highlight reel just coverage for week two. And shortly after, I'll get out the week three, probably in a separate video. I'm not sure if I have the time or the space on my computer to actually have <laughs> two videos rendering at once. But that's okay. I, I did want to get over some of the week two highlights and my thoughts in general going into uh, or looking back at the UPL in this sense. So, looking at the usage ranks, usage, uh, yeah, stats here for week two only. This isn't aggravated, this is solely from week two. There's nothing too out of the ordinary from the first five, or the first ten, besides Rapidash, and I'll talk to that for a second. For those who don't know, the Savali use and usage is totally inflated because they don't distinguish between forms, which is a real big shame because I can't tell if Savali Dark was being used more than, I, I don't know, Savali Poison. We probably saw, I mean, I know we saw a decent amount of Savali Fightings, and <laughs> you know, to be fair, I'm not just gonna, I'm just not gonna go back and count all that, <laughs> you know, for every Savali form there was out of the 24 uses. But yeah, this is all par, par for the course, but Rapidash had seen a lot of use here. And I think the reason why is that people wanted that fire type for the Firewater Core, right? That had that immediate speed, Z power, potential scarf or choice ban a lot you can do with rapidash in fact it's the only fire type in the top 10 and uh only fire type that you'll see all the way down till monferno so we don't even see combuskin being too popular believe it or not probably because the popularity of something like uh we even see we even saw more polyrath more um savali fightings or already had a lot of savali fightings it's understandable that, you know, we saw Combuskin only a total of one time, I guess. Still a very good Mon. That's a A, maybe even possibly A-plus tier Mon nowadays. That is really low on the ZUPL usage. We saw a lot of other, some weird stuff, of course. There was that, I forgot who brought that weird Violite team with um, Corsola and a few other stuff. But I want to get into the highlight matches and, you know, going into what there was, I didn't think there was anything that uh, unexpected or or crazy. We did see Stahl lose a few times. Um, you can even see, like, Dusclops and Avalok not having a perfect win percentage, which was, which was nice, a good change of pace from last week. And I think we did see some innovative sets and games, and that's what I kind of want to go into. So here's a game that Stahl did win, in fact, or at least, <laughs> or at least by the looks of it. <laughs> this is the TJ versus Teddy match, easily the number one highlight. A really, really funny match in retrospect, and uh, I think there was a, a lot of nerves, hard to kind of play and read this, even after you know what the gimmick is on Teddy's side, it's still kind of not so obvious to play. And we even saw a few Mons not see usage. And, <laughs> you know, I could almost do a whole little analysis about this entire team itself. It's so funny. But TJ actually has a well-built team as well. And uh, we even see two good Mons versus Stall, and that's Simiseer and... Uh, Simi Sharon Buffalo can do a really good job if you get rid of what they, you know, what checks them on stall. So we'll see how they play with, uh, with these, you know, notions in mind. But looking forward, if this was just a standard stall team, I think TJ has the right amount of materials, possibly, you know, SD shift tree deal with, uh, you know, late game, maybe as soon as Malmuel's gone. It, it looks like it, I shouldn't rephrase this as semi-stall because this could very easily be Choice Scarf Rotom. But I think TJ's win con, if you're looking at it, it's stall. It's to 
keep rocks up, get knocks off, uh, and find a way to win with either Simi Sear and Buffalo, usually prob or most likely one after the other, I think is a good a good idea in his mind. But the reality is is that this bait stall team, this actual offense, because that's what it is, is absolutely offense is something that you you had to pressure and prevent things like Licky from setting up keeping uh you know keeping a, a good wall breaker for this like Simi here alive and you'd really just have to trade hits with curse Licky Licky because that's what it was let's just show how it plays out so again not a bad idea for TJ to try to lead stealth rocks up probably not expecting Avalog and absolutely not expecting what this actually is. This is actually Choice Band Avalug. But right now, he wants to keep Golem healthy because it's going to be a really good, because it's a defensive Golem. It's going to be a great asset on his team, guaranteeing rocks. Uh, does not want to take Toxics from Avalug or Altaria. So going into Savali Poison here isn't that bad at all. You're not going to, and it, it's going to be a, a 252 HP Savali Poison gonna take anything Avalog has, especially the Toxic, really easily. But this damage, this is an unboosted Avalanche. That's 60 base power doing 35. This should immediately set some red flags as to say, what is this damage? If you didn't calc that, if you didn't, if you thought that was normal on a 252 HP Savali, uh, <laughs> you, you know that that's a that's a problem. But I think TJ was starting to realize from turn one that this team is not what it appears to be. And I think that kind of justifies this next play of his going for the U-turn. Also seeing the U-turn damage. That's seven damage from an uninvested Savali to Avalog. I know it doesn't seem like much, but that that's not, let's say, full, you know, Fizz Death Avalog either. Goes right into Golem. Even even though he didn't see Avalog switch out, he still went going, probably trying to put pressure on Rocks, thinking that this team might be semi stall You know, this team might be a lot more offensive, could have a hard time dealing with Rocks up. So that's exactly where he goes. He goes into Golem. Golem! You know, doing big damage here. And even if he did the calc on this 51% uh, Avalanche, the, the range is 51 to, to 59. So it at 55% uh, health after leftovers with this golem. There's still a good chance golem could live, but if if TJ sacks this to rocks, I guess that's okay. He just has to play offensively. And what this does do is it does give a free switch into Simi Seer, which I think is a pretty good play. Now, nasty plot or even just uh, you know four attacks mixed life for Simi Seer can do a ton against this against this team absolutely hurt it and destroy it but it has to stay healthy you know it can't continue to take life orbs to an extent it's nice to get into blaze range i mean that's why even choice scarf simi seer is really good against stall with knockoff and a blaze fire blast after a few um stealth rock twitch ins so getting the free boost here is pretty good it kind of depends on what tj simi seer is obviously after nasty pond and fire blast you could have grass coverage, ice coverage, electric coverage, even out of uh, him powers and grass knot, knockoff, superpower, focus blast. There's a lot of things you can run in Simi's here. So what we do see is the nasty plot. Teddy being a little, I, I think Teddy should absolutely be afraid of this. And it's a good thing he didn't go licky licky because if this was fighting MZ, that would be a bad play. Pukumuku with is this is actually innards out. This isn't even unaware. But for TJ, I think he's got to be uh, wary of this being unaware. Has to be careful of um, has to be careful of being toxic, stalled even. So TJ goes for taunt. And this is what I thought was a misplay on Teddy's side because if this was regular unaware and he's just letting him. Uh, you'll see the next few turns too. Just letting him set up like this. That's so dangerous, but we'll see Teddy had a <laughs> had a super risky team and it did pay off, but wow. That's all I gotta say. It's just it's incredible what ends up happening. So Grass Knot only being like 40 to like 30 base power, like it's not strong at all against 
little Pugamagoo here. And this is something that I think TJ probably didn't calc, but after that crit, doing the base damage, and at plus two Simis here, you may know that this is an unaware. Like, it's absolutely pretty... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm positive that you're, you're going to be able to know that this is not unaware Pukumuku after that damage. So now he has to play thinking that, oh no, if if he tries to sack Amon, I might go down thanks to innards out and I'll lose my sweeper. So this is really dangerous. This is a one for one, like a free destiny bond for Teddy if played wrong. So I don't think TJ recognized this because you can see this next turn, even after taking the grass knot, after realizing this, he just sets up more, you know? And that's kind of dangerous. It's a little free because Pukumuku was still taunted. You know, you weren't going to kill him right away after uh, times three grass knot, you know, judging off the damage. So you can at least get it a little lower. But it's still, you know, there's a lot of risk here with losing um, Simi Seer. And this is also kind of scary is that uh, even if you had the pre, you know the notion that this was still semi stall, I, th I thought Rotom was a somewhat obvious obvious scarf regardless of how this you know was turning up to be. So he jeopardized a lot of damage here on Simi's here, and after the and uh, even it's hard to say what he was expecting. If he wasn't expecting scarf, it's understandable. But as we see, he goes right into Puke Magoo and fire blast. Uh, Three times Fire Blast easily gets rid of Pugumuku at half, but that gets rid of Simisir. Uh, so that's just tough because Simisir absolutely plowed through the um, through his team. Now we only saw three moves here, but you know that last move could have easily been Hidden Power Ice, and that meant not even um, not even Altaria could come in. Depending on what the Licky Licky was, you could still maybe set up on it, do some damage if it was Focus Blast. I mean, Licky Licky is going to have a really hard time. But they both go down on this, um, what this turns to be, turn 8, the Volt Switch. Hard to say what his move was. He did lose his ground type and his, uh, you know, obviously his Volt Switch immunity. Which is a shame because Golem is a really good check to... Uh, Scarf Rotom Fan outside of Trick. You know, even with Trick, Rotom Fan has a really hard time, especially Scarf, dealing with uh, Golem. So, you know, you gotta ask, you gotta wonder if those rocks are worth it. This turn, blue. But TJ thinking he might have a, uh, a chance to set up against what may come on. Maybe it could have been Altaria for the Defog, maybe Rotom Fan for the, for the Scarf. It's, it's a really weird game. Uh, team composition, I'm sure TJ or really rarely anyone has played against. She, uh, Maul while revealing that it is uh, sheer force because Intimidate did not go off. TJ does not want to take a um, a Life Orb Iron Head play rough. Still wants to keep Savali Poison alive. But kind of kind of difficult because Shiftry, especially late game when this team is not not too offensive, and, or not too stally, or defensive, I should say. That Altaria, you know, very easily could have been like a Z-Move Dragon Dance set, you know? Probably is what it was, and that's where Shiftry could have easily swept this team if it got some setup damage, if it got uh, against Mawile, Swords Dance, I mean, keeping the Leaf Storm, and Avalog after the Rocks, Sucker Punch against Rotom, I mean, there's a lot of things that could have gone right his way, but Leaf Storm only doing 61. I shouldn't say only, it's incredible. But he does lose the Shiftry. Goes Savali Poison. Now this is pretty good because we know how healthy it is and that it could just revenge kill with um, T-Bolt. Alright, sorry about that. We're back. And yeah, again, from here, Savali probably being a good kill, but TJ likely thinking that he may want to preserve this, saying Thunderball might be too obvious, you know, Licky Licky coming in. It goes the U-turn, sadly, does not play well at all. Tede just sacking this as is, probably want to get a, getting a um, free switch into something like Licky Licky or even his Altaria, if he didn't know that this was Bolt Beam. Tede get the free kill, which is a bit of a problem because Swana could have done a lot late game, you know, if it, even if it was just special or physical. 
even. It could it could have at least made another well needed dent against his opponent team on what was a sack. But that's okay. Here comes Silph Poison. Does the move that he should have done last turn. Turn ball for the kill. Licky Licky comes in. And now TJ still probably unsure or maybe even unaware what this Licky Licky could have been. Likely he's just staying in for uh, Ice Beam, maybe even hoping for Freeze. It's not the worst idea at this point. So he goes for Ice Beam, he sees Curse, and at this point it's it's so likely to be over. Ice Beam only doing 11%, Curse making it much harder to go Bufflin. Maybe the play was the U-turn right into SD buff, but it kind of doesn't matter. There's a little bit of a, an extra twist here that we'll see. So TJ just takes these these knockoffs, you know, this damage. It doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, it's so unlikely for him to win. But we see that this Linky Licky isn't showing any signs of recovery. And finally, when maybe he thinks, when TJ thinks that the Linky Licky might want to go for like a wish or a rest, even maybe rest talk, uh, you know, curse knockoff kind of thing. Um, so Savali, so, yeah, so Savali so drops. Licky Licky's at half health, you know, uh, it's not the healthiest, and it's not even at the biggest buffs here, only at plus two on each side. So here comes SD buff, just trying to set up breakthrough. It's so unlikely, especially after Leftovers being knocked off for him to win. But Licky Licky actually goes down to these two, um, two returns here. We didn't see any recovery. I'm guessing it's Curse, Knock Off, Rest Talk, you know? It, it would make sense, you know, that Teddy's just going for some damage here. It doesn't necessarily matter. He's got a lot of a lot of faster mons and ways to deal with uh, both at half health. So Licky Licky drops, and here comes the Avalug. Avalug um, doing going for the superpower to break the sub, and then goes for another one for the kill. So... That's that. Even at minus one defense, Avalog still tanked that plus two return. Incredible mod. You know, with only like probably 252 HP. So what's to be learned about this game is, I gotta say, adjusting your expectations. The second you saw Choice Band Avalog, you knew that this was not stall. You know, the second you saw Rotom Fan, you knew this was semi-stall, right? You know, it could have been, it's it's possible this could have been something like Agua Berry or even Leftovers of Pain Split, Rotom being uh, an extra defogger that can wisp. There's a little utility for Rotom Fan on a standard stall team. The second, turn one, you saw, I mean, you can calc and know that this is Choice Band Avalog. It's just about adjusting your play styles. The second you saw Avalog being a uh, Choice Band you know the team can go a lot of different ways and there's different mons you maybe could have preserved and played better. Shiftry saw little to no use. Swana actually just dropped, you know. Very cool team and a bait from Tede. That was uh, that was a really cool, easily the highlight of week two. And then this next game here is with Zaya versus 5-Gen, you know, this was the big game of the week, you know, the two big names. Gotta love it. And Zaya obviously bringing webs when you see something like Smeargirl followed by um, Ponyard and what is most likely and absolutely was Gorge Guy Small. And 5-Gen bringing a, what turns out to be a little bit more of a bulkier offense and what I believe unless if I'm misremembering a scarfless offense and that really turned out to be a big problem and there was a crucial turn here where <laughs> I mean a huge turn that could have went so much more in the favor of 5gen if he had a little bit more of a standard set which we will see Anyways, as far as leads go for turn one, 5-Gen probably doesn't want to get off Rocks Fearing Spore from 
Smeargle. And it has to kind of dance around between Sawsbuck, maybe Bolt Switch. There's a lot that it can, that can go right for 5 Gen's favor, and I think more that can go wrong for Zayas. With with this team, you know, there's a couple Defoggers that are possible. Savali and um, Rotom Fan, even. And Stecky, Sticky Web is so good here, right? Only one Mon um, invulnerable to Sticky Webs, which is also weak to Stealth Rock. So the hazards that the hazards that um, Smeargle can provide are going to be really good and something that you want to keep up continuously. And there's a few ways that a Sticky Web team can do this. And harsh and a good part of Smeargle's defense is its speed and spore. I mean, that's what keeps it alive. So we do see a lead in Smeargle. Again, little dangerous. There was a few other Mons that Zaya could have led off with, including um, what we saw was Electro Electrovire that was Expert Belt. Gorge Guy's small. Could have been even a decent enough uh, lead just for scouting some stuff. Frisk and Will-O-Wisp being really helpful. You will know right away if this is you would have known right away if this Rotom fan was Scarf or Agua Berry, you know, of the sort. But Smeargle just probably expecting maybe what could have been a Scarf, Thunder Maul, or even Air Slash. Goes right for the Sticky Web. Rotom fan is slower than Smeargle. So we know that Rotom fan is not even max HP. So this is a really weird set. And this is how I think immediately you might be picked off. But I'm, oh, yeah, this is a bulky offense. This is a bulkier team all around. Very slow team. Uh, web still being pretty important, though, for a decent amount of months. Just goes right for the sticky web, right into Golem. And this is kind of odd because even though Golem's got a lot of bulk and can be, you know, can have some recovery with leftovers, it's. Five Dev is risking a lot for this sport. And I don't know. I don't know what the best move he could have done because everything was going to be vulnerable to Sticky Web. But Golem just takes the Spore and this gives Smeargle a free opportunity to set up Stealth Rock, which we see. Golem gets the prerequisite, you know, two turns of sleep. That's pretty good on not losing Smeargle, but that's dangerous. If Golem woke up and went for Earthquake, uh, you know, this is it. This is the only time you can have hazards before, you know, they go for Defog, either from Rotom Fan or Savali. So, Again, a little risky here. You, you want to keep Smeargle alive. And here comes Parting Shot. Really cool here, giving you a pretty safe switch into Gorgeous Guys if this somehow was Choice Banded, which it probably wasn't, you know, given on the team. We do see it to be Leftovers followed by uh, Stealth Rock, so easily defensive goal. Gorgeous Guys has a free Seed Bomb into Explosion, which is pretty threatening against 5 Gen's team. That, that can bring a lot of momentum, could prevent defog and uh, absolutely get rid of the potential defogger. So even though there might have been a little bit of a risk earlier, the momentum can be followed through. So here comes turn five for the seed bomb, only doing 13% to Rotom. That Rotom is defensive. Now this turn, I think there's a team building problem on Zaya's end and a misplay on 5 Gen's because 5 Gen needs to expect explosion and if he's gonna lose Rotom right here and down there's a lot of momentum that can just plow through his team but this Gorge guys never reveals explosion he goes right into Zaya now this is a misplay on his end because here comes the air slash and even though you it was a miss if he lost um, if he lost his his web setter here then it was a guaranteed no webs and with webs up and stealth racks up you know who sweeps? Swana. Swana plows his team. We don't know what the Savali form is yet exactly, but there's a very little chip damage needed on all ends, so long as you have webs up. And, you know, Stealth Rocks helps that a lot. So, thankfully gets the, the air slash. So, a little bit of hacks in Zaya's favor, absolutely. Smeargle being already presented to be faster gives him a free spore. And he's just gonna kind of follow suit from the, the last few kind of plays. Parting shot into Gorge Geist. Golem still asleep for two turns, followed by a, another seed bomb. And this is where Explosion would have absolutely killed. Could have been safe, but we don't see it. We, we see the repetition of the same amount of turns, except this time Rotom is a little 
has a little more damage on his end. This time, the Air Slash does hit. Again, Rotom just below health, half health. Savali comes in, Savali normal. This could be a lot of things. I think 5gen is predicting um, choice band or just SD physical. But what it actually ends up being is choice specs. Uh, Zaya going for hyper voice, I think it's, it's a little safe, but I think that the standard for Savali, especially on webs, would be physical, either choice span or swords dance. So by revealing right here, with especially with this 27% damage on Hyper Voice, that your specs, you didn't get too much from that turn, whereas he really only has um, one bulkier ice resistance. You know, if this was Bolt Beam, you could have easily just went for Ice Beam. I think that would have three a KO'd Simiseer. Not that you'd stay in, but after Rocks, that's, you know, that's reasonable damage. Gets it gets it put into um, range for uh, even Gorge guys to deal with potentially. So I thought Ice Beam was the better play here, even just obviously. But uh, Hyper Voice was safe enough. Golem still has a good chance to stay asleep. Point Swana is safe as well because Earthquake could have um, came out and that could give you a free Z move here. But Golem, uh, getting ready to wake up, is going to want to switch out into Rotom, just sacks that. Swana gets a free liquidation, because of course it is. Nothing can stop Swana. I mean, this is almost it. I, I wanted Swana, when I was watching this match, though, to maybe... It's hard to say, but I wanted Swana to, um, to wait just a little longer. And this is where, if you had Explosion Gorge, guys, you could have just went... Gorg on Golem, get a few seed bombs off on Rotom, and now when Savali came in, which is this turn 14, Savali comes in, you could just explode on it. If, so if this was the Savali Dark, was the Defogger, you were safe. But after doing a few calcs, I think Zaya had the best play at this point to do just the Z Mirror move for the plus two Raybirds that are coming. But this is the problem. After you lost Sticky Webs, assuming that Sauce Buck is Choice Scarf, because that's the obvious Choice Scarf around his team now that um, Rotom Fan was revealed to be just leftovers. Swana can't sweep, you know. Swana is vulnerable to uh, Scarf Double Edge or Headbutt flinches. I mean, it's just an annoying position to be in. But the plus two Brave Bird also was a little bit scary because if this was a uh, more invested Savali, Savali Dark with maybe Bolt Beam coverage, you know, 252 HP. It lives a plus two Brave Bird after, after Stealth Rocks, believe it or not. It, it, it's actually something that it can take. So, overall, just a scary amount of plays. And here is the turn 16. So this is what I was alluding to earlier. I can't believe Sawsbuck was not Choice Scarf. This is just incredible, and I think this is a flaw in 5Gen's team building. Probably expecting a bulkier build or just being able to play around with uh, you know, speed tiers. But when your only Pokemon faster than Swana is weak to Aqua Jet, you have a glaring, a glaring Z Mirror move Swana weakness. One of the best mons in ZU right now. And 5Gen really paid for that. At this point, it's kind of done, you know. 5Gen baiting the Brave Bird recoil damage. Only two Mons left. Ponyard comes up now that Polyrath's gone. Ponyard wasn't going to be able to do anything this game um, with Polyrath up. Simi Seer goes right for a Flare Blitz, revealing it's mixed or at the very least physical. Ponyard does not sucker because you don't want to sub and you know nasty plot. Very safe play. Actually, ended up being more helpful with all the <laughs> little extra recoil damage. Not that it matters too much though because. Extra Belt vo uh, Electro Virus comes in, and that's kind of it. So Zaya can afford Scarfless, because obviously he had speed control from two different types of priority. Uh, motor Drive, even, on Electro Virus is somewhat reliable to get, if you can bait it well. And Expert Belt <laughs> with a Motor Drive boost is crazy. As well as, of course, Sticky Webs. And Extra Belt was super needed here at the end, just for uh, securing this um, kill with Golem and keeping Electro Virus alive and healthy. Doing 50% with uh, an extra belt earthquake meant that if Golem did wake up, and that was a protect, that's why it went first. 
um, it was a guarantee to a KO, you know, no worries. And Electra Vire, oh, don't worry about that. Electra Vire does tank the Flare Blitz, kind of doesn't really matter, it was a little too weak. I think there was Shadow Sneak still left on Gorge guys, uh, Zavali, full health, you know. Could have been could have been scary if it somehow got into Blaze range, but it ended up working out. Um, overall, I think Zaya should have played Sticky Webs a little bit more conservatively. Swana absolutely should have been played conservatively. I think he did Ponyard well. I think he did his um, Electrovire really well. And Swana still did the best for what it was worth on that like turn 14 when it finally came in. And 5 Gen, I think, needed to just have a either a better matchup or just um, overall just some more speed. Yeah, especially when it's so weak to tell webs as well as is. Okay, and the last one for week two was the Yovan versus Tom Holland game. And looking at the team preview, they share already three of the same mons here, right? Uh, even in the same order, with uh, the Savali forums possibly even being a fourth of the same mon. But a lot of cool sets, I think, on both sides. Uh, some Premier Mons. And uh, there, there's a decent amount to be learned from this game, and I want to get into that. From the lead, we see Rapidash versus Savali Dragon. That's what this is. Nothing really Yovan can do, and Tom could probably go into Polyrath or, you know. What's really free was the Draco Meteor. Zero Dragon resists on his team. Savali, uh, <laughs> Steel, and Fairy don't exist at the moment <laughs> in CU, so Draco Meteor was absolutely free. May as well go for it as High Horsepower did nothing. This was kind of a weird play on Yovan's end because what is High Horsepower hitting either Savali or you know potential switch ins like Pyrath? It's not doing much at all, and if anything, you're risking. Draco Meteor, you know, killing Rapidash, and it's also revealing the set right here, especially with this turn two. Fearing possibly a Z move or just a, a free switch into Polyrath because it is free. Tom uh, goes into Poly and Yovan goes into the Morning Sun. And this is the first two turns, I want to say that it was totally in Tom's favor. You scouted the, the, um, the Rapidash set, and you're going to get off this free substitute for Polyrath. I don't know what Yovan was doing. Maybe he was just uh, getting his you know, feet wet, trying to figure out how to play against this team. But overall, revealing what his Rapidash was and not gaining too much out of that, out of those interactions, I want to say it's absolutely in Tom's favor, especially after showing the sub and what we see will be sub-toxic focus punch. Now Tom has to be wary of this Marsh Tom because we don't know exactly what it is. So I think it's um, safe. It was safe enough for him to go for Toxic, on what ended up being the Electrovirus switching. But this is the play that I think is kind of odd because we also don't see a Fighting Resist yet on Yovan's team. So somewhat safe enough to expect maybe Savali um, Ghost. But you got to understand if, if Yovan hits Savali Ghost. He doesn't have the best dark resists. You know, Shiftry, doesn't matter what the Shiftry set is, it's not taking, um, you know, Swords Dance, Sucker Punches, and knockoffs from the opposing Shiftry, right? So, it, in, in that area, if you're thinking it's Savali Ghost, I think that this Toxic here, or this um, Substitute, that's what it was, is coming out. Substitute was okay, but I thought the Focus Punch was free. And think about that. Now, if it was Focus Punch, the Volt Switch, and you know, Focus Punch would have announced itself. You would have Volt Switched into what ends up being, yes, Savali Ghost. So Substitute was safe enough, but it does put it in a, uh, you know, a lower range. And this is where the Focus Punch comes down. Now Savali Ghost comes out. Somewhat the same um, line of thought, but overall that was... Tom's uh, most successful play out of these um, these last three turns, the sub into Focus Band Punch, baiting Savali Ghost, allowing him to go for the Toxic finally. Yovan wanting to set up so it could break this um, Polyrath sub, but it's a really bad position after landing that Toxic, a 
allowing Polly to just sub up, get some damage off, and now there's not too many turns left of this, so he might still have to pick, you know, a sack here and there because Polly does not have the most offensive measures to deal with, obviously, Zavali Gross. But here comes the waterfall, and uh, even if that waterfall was a little bit weaker, the toxic damage would have got it. So, so overall, uh, I think it was a really good first ten, uh, 11 turns for Tom. Was able to scout and get rid of you know, a lot of uh, key members from Yovan's team. But now he has to kind of play catch up. And the Volt Switch from Electrovire guaranteed the kill on Polly. Polly's not doing too much nowadays now that it's <laughs> right now because um, because of how uh, low his health is. And the the problem about not having something like Swana with Z Mirror Move is you could, if you had Swana on Tom's team, or if this was Swana, say, over Polyrath, you could maybe afford to go right into Electrovire, knowing that if he did, if Yovan did go for the Earthquake, you could Revenge Kill with Swan. If it still had a Z Mirror move, it's phenomenal. But Tom's in a tough 50-50 or situation to take the Volt Switch, just gain back some momentum. Polyrath did its thing. Now here comes his Rapid Dash. We just see a few doubles. Again, great plays. Even 13 moves in. Tom's doing the good moves. Gets the free switch into Shift Tree on the Marsh Tom. Yovan back to playing catch up. Didn't gain too much out of these interactions. Kind of a weird set of plays here, though. The what ends up being the triple, <laughs> you know, from Tom into Savali Dragon. I thought knockoff was free. I mean, there's nothing that wants to take knockoff. Maybe he's fearing. Flame Bodies, Z Move, Rapid Ash, so trying to get that match up again. Oh, I'm going a little too fast. So he gets the U turn, but again, still not the worst amount of plays because when Shiftry came in, you get a free U turn. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, that was the problem uh, Flame Body on the uh, bulkier Rapid Ash. So finally, his own Electrovire comes in, just a lot more switching and doubles. Finally, uh, Yovan had enough. And I think that was a great play on Yovan and just kind of a bad play on Tom. He was being a little bit predictable with all these switches, trying to get its opportunity when I would say you had an opportunity. There was a lot of things you could have tried or done. It was a little bit passive at this point. Um, and he paid for that. He obviously paid for that, especially when Draco Meteor was still free. You know what I mean? Especially when Draco Meteor was free, he, had, he went for the U-turn. So, that was a bit of a problem. Anyway, Sand Slash comes out after, uh, you know, Electrovirus threatening the faster Rapid Rapidash. So keeping Rampy alive is, is, you know, still good enough for Bronzer. Sand Slash being a great Scarf Electrovire, a switch in and punish. Not much Tom can do, so he's kind of low on the matchup here. Slash being able to set up rocks, threaten Bronzer with knockoff. It's, I, I think this is where Tom's starting to lose, lose too much per turn. Turns out it was not knockoff same slash, or even if it was, it doesn't necessarily matter. It was right into Marsh, Marsh Top. Yovan thinks he has a good opportunity on the passive Bronzer to start setting up. Bronze, okay, yeah, Bronze goes for sine wave. I thought maybe Toxic was coming out sooner or later. Um, funny enough that <laughs> Marsh Jump is still faster. Um, but maybe we don't see Toxic. I, don't know, I thought that was odd. Okay, well, regardless, Marsh Jump set plus two. Got the free setup against it. Low, low enough rolls on sine wave, only 24 and 22. That could have been a little higher, but thankfully Marsh is a little healthy. Savali has a decent enough amount of chip, and... Um, Marsh just goes for the rest to get some recovery off, and what we do see is um, rest, talk, mono, mono attacking waterfall, uh, which ended up being a really weird set. And I think Yovan, if you look at this in retrospect, got rid of the the two mons needed for this mon to win. So even after losing a lot on Yovan, Yovan's uh, end. He still did a great job 
finding his wind condition with rest talk marsh top anyways this thing's just going to continue to get the sleep talk trying to hope for a good roll see there's the 35 percent side wave uh so yeah again just trying to get rolls from sleep talk it makes a lot of sense here i don't want to skip turns but we do end up seeing marsh top taking a little too much damage here but at least getting the the kill on um, Bronzer. This allows Savali Dragon to, to revenge kill. Sorry, I'm getting tired here. Tom's down a Mon and low on a few key things. You know, Stealth Rocks and Rapid Ash isn't the best. But there's still a lot in his favor. You know, the Savali basically gets a kill when it's, you know, he's got to be careful about um, Rapid Ash if, or, uh, if rocks do come off. Right? And this is where a play I thought it was safe enough to go to Sandslash to get a rapid spin off, right? Because then your yeah, faster than Ash, Rapid Ash, could have gotten um who got some recovery off later, some kills, or even just rapid ash or sandslash going for an earthquake right there is okay. But keeping it for, you know, physical walls fine as, as well. Here comes the ice punch and Tom wasn't even predicting at this point. It's hard to say what he wants his Wincon to be other than his own Scarf Electro Vire and Rapid Ash trying to win speed ties and stuff. Or breaking Sand Slash. Alright, in turn 30. Alright, in turn 30, we see um, <laughs> Jovan's Electro Vire actually being um, extra belt, which is. Kind of, you know, if this was early on, this would be a pretty big red flag as to say what the scarf could be if we saw that Rapidash wasn't and Electrofire wasn't as well. You know, is there a scarf even? Cross Shop just shows that he, um, Electrofire does not have an Earthquake and that's okay. It does decent enough damage, but Tom actually might be able to pull something out of here with the faster Vire, Rapidash still alive. Here comes the Sand Slash like I talk about. Ice Punch. You know, not being able to it KO, but still do a decent amount of damage. Putting Sand Slash in a Z move range for Rapid Ash, potentially, at least. And there it is. Yeah, there it is. Big comeback possible. And this is why I thought maybe getting that spin off earlier on the Savali Dragon that he was already ready to sack could have been worth it, especially when Slash wasn't taking these hits all by a Z move. Um, and right here, I mean, this is it. I mean, if Tom outplays the Life Orb Shiftry, Tom could, could win it all. You know, even after, you know, playing so hard and losing, you know, having a really bad matchup against Marsh Top and uh, losing a lot of key mons here, he still had a chance to win, except, except what we saw, which was the funniest play there was. I think of week of week two, the turn 34 explosion to win, and it's just so funny because I think there was a lot of turns for Shiftry to have died or to have um, revealed the choice scarf, but it was kept alive till the end to get the explosion off. You know, look at the turns where Shiftry does come in. I'm gonna say here, right on the rapid dash. Yeah, he technically could have got the boom right here and there and got the kill, but he decided to keep it alive. I think that's fair. He's a lot. You know, a lot of monsters still want to go into Marshtown being free. Also, the double being possible. There's a few other times where it's like, man, oh man, you could have revealed it, you could have lost some health, show that, you know, show for what it was worth. But yeah, Yovan had a, uh, like I think he played a great game. I think that even though that there were some. You know, misplays in the, in the first part, or at least Tom doing really well. He read Tom at the end, and he he still had a good win con with Marsh Tom that he played well, got rid of the poly and the shiftry, uh, or ended up being that way. Okay, and what, what's got to be a quick little mention from week two, of course, was this Derza game where he brought, brought Block, Starfberry, Sub, Flash, Executor on a team that Derza had. You know, they're just not doing much of anything to deal with this webs. In one line of thought, going for block to get rid of Smurgle isn't that bad. We see Toxic Thread Smurgle, which I think is a 
you know, against most matchups, pretty decent overall. But Ed getting rid of Snuggle here, it's not the worst, but it also means if Dirge's opponent keeps up the momentum uh, and keeps rocks and webs up, even after Snuggle's gone, he's in the some really hot water. So even if he had let us say rapid spin on Kamala on top of defog on his on his um Savali, it's just super dangerous on the amount of offensive mons that he had, especially Shell Smash Crustle against this team. So Executor gets the damaging the kill of course off Smurgle that can't really touch Executor at all. Um predicting there's a predicting explosion or something this turn, so it goes for substitute or endeavor even maybe. Anyways, here comes Shiftry. Probably thinking that this is like a sub dual sap, right? With block or even toxic maybe. You know, Shiftry can afford to go for a dark pulse and take a toxic, get a two a KO, or get a, you know one a KO after um, the substitute is gone. But here we see something nasty. We see the flash. And this is the saddest two turns of week two. Not only missing the Dark Pulse on the Savali um, Dragon switch in, but then missing the Explosion. So it doesn't matter what the Savali Dragon set was, but Dark Pulse and the Explosion absolutely killed Savali. And even on this turn eight, let's say if there's a try to ke you know keep the Savali alive, um, you know, the missing the explosion explosion would have maybe i think it would have absolutely killed the savali dragon but even if it didn't would have maybe been in rocks range or just low enough to keep the pressure on for rocks because missing means that there's a guaranteed um defog this turn nine i mean luckily floats is able to go for taunt but still it's just having to uh you know having to go these plays having to for you know forcing flotuzzle to taunt so savali dragon ends up Predicting, you know, great, great plan. Um, pitches end to go for the Draco Meteor here, but you know, you just lost three Mons, right? So early on to this dumb Flash Executor, and there could have been so much pressure. You know, Savali could have just died right away. I think that there's a absolutely lost this matchup outside of the, you know, outside of getting lucky with the Flash, which is exactly what happened. Um, even some insult to injury later on with these uh, with the Starfberry harvesting into you know max defense so he can easily or um, Crustle's force even set up to deal with it. Not that it mattered. Uh, it was pretty much over at this end. But Crustle could have done so much against this team. Could have easily got two um, choice guard or two shell smash smashes off against Garf Electrovire if played right and um, just plowed through this team really funny just a quick little one for that but yeah that's that guys that's week two zupl sorry for the wait i'll get um week three out well sooner than later <laughs> and i'll probably do maybe a quick little review of some sets and mons that i saw maybe some predictions coming into or finishing up with week four and i want to thank you all for watching thank you